welcome to this podcast on blockchain let's see if we have been following the banking investing or cryptocurrency over the last 10 years we may have definitely heard the term blockchain the record keeping technology behind the bitcoin network some of the key takeaways about blockchain blockchain is a specific type of database Blockchain differs from a typical database in the way it stores information. Blockchains store data in blocks that are then chained together. Hence the term blockchain. As new data comes in, it is entered into a fresh block. Once the block is filled with data, it is chained chained onto the previous block which makes the data chained together in chronological order. Different types of information can be stored on a blockchain, but the most common use so far has been as a ledger for transactions. In Bitcoin's case, blockchain is used in a decentralized way so that no single person or group has control. Rather, all users collectively retain control. Decentralized blockchains are immutable, which means that the data entered is irreversible. For Bitcoin this means that transactions are permanently recorded and viewable to anyone. Now let's see what is blockchain. Blockchain seems complicated and it definitely can be. But its core concept is really quite simple. A blockchain is a type of database. To be able to understand blockchain it helps to first understand what a database actually is. A database is a collection of information that is stored electronic electronically on a computer system. Information or data in databases is typically structured in table format to allow for easier searching and filtering for specific information. What is the difference between someone using a spreadsheet to store information rather than a database? Spreadsheets are designed for one person. or a smaller group of people to store and access limited amounts of information in contrast a database is designed to house significantly larger amounts of information that can be accessed filtered and manipulated quickly and easily by any number of users at once large databases achieve this by housing data on servers that are made of powerful computers These servers can sometimes be built using hundreds or thousands of computers in order to have the computational power and storage capacity necessary for many users to access the database simultaneously. While a spreadsheet or database may be accessible to any number of people, it is often owned by a business and managed by an appointed individual that has complete control over how it works and the data within it. So how does a blockchain differ from a database? Let's start with the storage structure. One key difference between a typical database and a blockchain is the way the data is structured. A blockchain collects information together in groups, also known as blocks, that hold sets of information. Blocks have certain storage capacities and when filled are chained onto the previously filled block. forming a chain of data known as the blockchain all new information that follows that freshly added block is compiled onto a newly formed block that will then also be added to the chain once filled a database structures its data into tables whereas a blockchain like its name implies structures its data into chunks or blocks that are chained together This makes it so that the all that all blockchains are databases but not all databases are blockchains. This system also inherently makes an irreversible timeline of data when implemented in a decentralized nature. When a block is filled it is set in stone and becomes a part of this timeline. Each block in the chain is given an exact time stamp when it is added to the chain. Let's understand what the term decentralization means. For the purpose of understanding blockchain, it is instructive to view it in the context of how it has been implemented by Bitcoin. Like a database, 
Bitcoin needs a collection of computers to store its blockchain. For Bitcoin, this blockchain is just a specific type of database that stores every Bitcoin transaction ever made. In Bitcoin's case, and unlike most databases, these computers are not all under one roof, and each computer or group of computers is operated by a unique individual or group of individuals. Imagine that a company owns a server comprised of 10,000 computers with a database holding all of its client's account information. This company has a warehouse containing all of these computers under one roof and has full control of each of these computers and all the information contained within them. Similarly, Bitcoin consists of thousands of computers, but each computer or group of computers that hold its blockchain is in a different geographic location. And they all are operated by separate individuals or groups of people. These computers that make up Bitcoin's network are called nodes. In this model, Bitcoin's blockchain is used in a decentralized way. However, private, centralized blockchains where the computers that make up its network are owned and operated by a single entity do exist. In a blockchain, each node has full record of the data that has been stored on the blockchain since its inception. For Bitcoin, the data is the entire history of all Bitcoin transactions. If one node has an error in its data, it can use the thousands of other nodes as a reference point to correct itself. This way, no one node within the network can alter information held within it. Because of this, the history of transactions in each block that make up Bitcoin's blockchain is irreversible. If one user tampers with Bitcoin's record of transactions, all other nodes would cross-reference each other and easily pinpoint the node with the incorrect information. This system helps to establish an exact and transparent order of events. For Bitcoin, this information is a list of transactions, but it is, it is also possible for a blockchain to hold a variety of information like legal contracts, state identifications, or a company's product inventory. In order to change how that, that system works or the information stored within it, a majority of the decentralized network's computing power would need to agree on said changes. This ensures that whatever changes do occur are in the best interest of the majority. Let's take a look at the transparency of blockchain. Because of the decentralized nature of Bitcoin's blockchain, all transactions can be easy, transparently viewed by either having a personal node or by using blockchain explorers that allow anyone to see transactions occurring live. Each node has its own copy of the chain that gets updated as fresh blocks are confirmed and added. This means that if you wanted to, you could track Bitcoin wherever it goes. For example, exchanges have been hacked in the past where those who held Bitcoin on the exchange lost everything. While the hacker may be entirely anonymous, the bitcoins that they extracted are easily traceable. If the bitcoins that were stolen in some of these hacks were to be moved or spent somewhere, it would be known. But how secure is blockchain? Blockchain technology accounts for the issues of security and trust in several ways. First, new blocks are always stored linearly and chronologically. That is, they are always added to the end of the blockchain. If you take a look at Bitcoin's blockchain, you will see that each block has a position on the chain called a height. As of November 2020, the block's height has re had reached 656,197 blocks so far. After a block has been added to the end of the blockchain, it is very difficult to go back and alter the contents of the block unless the majority reached a consensus to do so. That's because each block contains its own hash, along with the hash of the block before it, as well as the previously mentioned timestamp. Hash codes are created by a math function that turns digital information into a string of numbers and letters. If that information is edited in any way, 
the hash code changes as well. Here's why that's important to security. Let's say a hacker wants to alter the blockchain and steal Bitcoin from everyone else. If they were to alter their own single copy, it would no longer align with everyone else's copy. When everyone else cross-references their copies against each other, they would see this one copy stand out and that hacker's version of the chain would be cast away as illegitimate. Succeeding with such a hack would require that the hacker simultaneously control and alter 51% of the copies of the blockchain so that their new copy becomes a majority copy and thus the agreed upon chain. Such an attack would also require an immense amount of money and resources as they would need to redo all of the blocks because they would now have different timestamps and hash codes. Due to the size of Bitcoin's network and how fast it is growing, the cost to pull off such a feat would probably be insurmountable. Not only would this be extremely expensive, but it would also likely be fruitless. Doing such a thing would not go unnoticed, as network members would see such drastic alterations to the blockchain. The network members would then fork off to a new version of the chain that has not been affected. This would cause the attacked version of Bitcoin to plummet in value, making the attack ultimately pointless as the bad actor has control of a worthless asset. The same would occur if the bad actor were to attack the new fork of Bitcoin. It is built this way so that taking part in the network is far more economically incentivized than attacking it. Bitcoin versus Blockchain the goal of blockchain is to allow digital information to be recorded and distributed, but not edited. Blockchain technology was first outlined in 1991 by Stuart Heber and West Scott Storneta, two researchers who wanted to implement a system where document timestamps could not be tampered with. But it wasn't until almost two decades later with the launch of Bitcoin in January 2009 that blockchain had its first real-world application. The Bitcoin protocol is built on a blockchain. In a research paper introducing the digital currency, Bitcoin's pseudonymous creator Satoshi Nakamoto referred to it as a new electronic cash system that's fully peer-to-peer -peer with no trusted third party. The key thing to understand here is that Bitcoin merely uses blockchain as a means to transparently record a ledger of payments. But blockchain can, in theory, be used to immutably record any number of data points. As discussed, this could be in the form of transactions, votes in the election, product inventories, state identifications, deeds to homes, and much more. There is a vast variety of blockchain-based projects looking to implement blockchain in ways to help society other than just recording transactions. One good example is that of blockchain being used as a way to vote in democratic elections. The nature of blockchain's immutability means that fraudulent voting would become far more difficult to occur. For example, a voting system could work such that each citizen of a country would be issued a single cryptocurrency token. Each candidate would then be given a specific wallet address, and the voters would send their token or crypto to whichever candidate's address they wish to vote for. The transparent and traceable nature of blockchain would eliminate the need for human vote counting as well as the ability of bad actors to tamper with physical ballots. Let's now see how blockchain compares with banks. Banks and decentralized blockchains are vastly different. In a typical bank, brick and mortar banks are open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays, and some banks are open on weekends but with limited hours. All banks are closed on banking holidays. For Bitcoin, there are no set hours and they are open 24-7, 365 days a year. Coming to transaction fees, for card payments, this fee varies based on the card and is not paid by the user directly. For a bank, fees are paid to the payment processor by stores and are usually charged per transaction. 
For Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a variable transaction fees determined by miners and users. This fee can range between $0 and $50, but users have the ability to determine how much of a fee they are willing to pay. This creates an open marketplace where if the user says their fee is too low, their transaction may not be processed. For card payments, it takes around 24 to 48 hours for banks. Checks takes 24 to 72 hours. ACH transfers take 24 to 48 hours. And WAT transfers takes 24 hours. For Bitcoin, the transactions can take as little as 15 minutes and as much lower as much over an hour depending on network congestion. So how is blockchain used? As we know, blocks on Bitcoin's blockchain store data about monetary transactions. But it turns out that blockchain is actually a reliable way of storing data about other types of transactions as well. Some companies that have already incorporated blockchain include Walmart, Pfizer, Siemens, Unilever and a host of others. For example, IBM has created its Food Trust blockchain to trace the journey that food products take to get to its locations. The food in industry has seen countless outbreaks of E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria as well as hazardous materials being accidentally introduced to foods. In the past, it has taken weeks to find the source of these outbreaks or the cause of sickness from what people are eating. Using blockchain, it gives brands the ability to track a food product's route from its origin through each stop it makes and finally its delivery. If a food is found to be contaminated, then it can be traced all the way back through each stop to its origin. Not only that, but these companies can also now see everything else it may have come in contact with allowing the identification of the problem to occur far sooner, potentially saving lives. This is one example of blockchain in practice, but there are many other forms of blockchain implementation. Let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of blockchain. For all of its complexity, blockchain's potential as a decentralized form of record keeping is almost without limit. From greater user privacy and heightened security, to lower processing fees and fewer errors, blockchain technology may very well see applications beyond these outlined here. But there are also some disadvantages. The pros of blockchain. Improved accuracy by removing human involvement in verification. Cost reductions by eliminating third-party verification. Decentralization makes it harder to tamper with. Transactions are secure, private, and efficient. Transparent technology Provides a banking alternative and a way to secure personal information of citizens of for countries with unstable or underdeveloped governments. Let's look at the cons of blockchain. There is significant technology cost associated with mining Bitcoin. Low transactions per second. There is also a history of use in illicit and illegal activities with Bitcoin. The last is regulation. Let's look into details of the advantages of blockchain. The accuracy of the chain. Transactions on the blockchain network are approved by a network of thousands of computers. This removes almost all human involvement in the verification process resulting in less human error and an accurate record of information. Cost Reductions Typically, consumers pay a bank to verify a transaction, a notary to sign a document, or a minister to perform a marriage. Blockchain eliminates the need for third-party verification and with it their associated costs. Decentralization Blockchain does not store any of its information in a central location. Instead, the blockchain is copied and spread across a network of computers. Whenever a new block is added to the blockchain, every computer on the network updates its blockchain to reflect the change. Efficient transactions Transactions placed to a central authority can take up to a few days to settle. If we attempt to deposit a check on Friday, for example, 
we may not actually see the funds in our account until Monday morning. Whereas financial institutions operate during business hours, transactions can be completed in as little as 10 minutes using blockchain. Private Transactions Many blockchain networks operate as public databases, meaning that anyone with an internet connection can view a list of the network's transaction history. All the users can access details about transactions, they cannot access identifying information about the users making those transactions. It is a common misperception that blockchain networks like Bitcoin are anonymous, when in fact they are only confidential. Secure Transactions Once a transaction is recorded, its authenticity must be verified by the blockchain network. Thousands of computers on the blockchain rush to confirm that the details of the purchase are correct. After a computer has validated the transaction, it is added to the blockchain block. Each block on the blockchain contains its own unique hash along with the unique hash of the block before it. When the information on a block is edited in any way, that block's hash code changes. However, the hash code on the block after it would not. This discrepancy makes it extremely difficult for information on the blockchain to be changed without notice. Transparency Most blockchains are entirely open source software. This means that anyone and everyone can view its code. This gives auditors the ability to review cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin for security. This also means that there is no real authority on who controls Bitcoin's code or how it is edited. Because of this, anyone can suggest changes or upgrades to the system. Banking the Unbanked Perhaps the most profound advantage of blockchain and Bitcoin is the ability for anyone, regardless of ethnicity, gender or cultural background, to use it. According to the World Bank, there are nearly 2 billion adults that do not have bank accounts or any means of storing their money or wealth. Nearly all of these individuals live in developing countries where the economy is in its infancy and entirely dependent on cash. Let's take a look at some of the disadvantages of blockchain. The technology cost. Although blockchain can save users money on transaction fees, the technology is far from free. The proof-of-work system that Bitcoin uses to validate transactions, for example, consumes vast amount of computational power. Speed Inefficiency Bitcoin is a perfect case study for the possible inefficiencies of blockchain. Bitcoin's proof-of-work system takes about 10 minutes to add a new block to the blockchain. At that rate, it's estimated that the blockchain network can only manage about 7 transactions per second. Although other cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum perform better than Bitcoin, they are still limited by blockchain. Legacy brands like Visa, for example, can process 24,000 transactions per second. Illegal Activity While confidentiality on the blockchain network protects users from hacks and preserves privacy, it also allows for illegal trading and activity on the blockchain network. The most cited example of blockchain being used for illicit transactions is probably the Silk Road, an online dark web drug marketplace operating from February 2011 until October 2013 when it was shut down by the FBI. Regulation Many in the crypto space have expressed concerns about government regulation of our cryptocurrencies. While it is getting increasingly difficult and near impossible to end something like Bitcoin, as its decentralized network grows, governments could theoretically make it illegal to own cryptocurrencies or participate in their networks. So what's next for blockchain? First proposed as a research project in 1991, blockchain is comfortably settling into its late 20s. Like most millennials its age, blockchain has seen its fair share of public scrutiny over the last two decades with businesses around the world speculating about what the technology is capable of and where it is headed in the years to come. 
With many practical applications for the technology already being implemented and explored, blockchain is finally making a name for itself at age 27, in no small part because of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. As a buzzword on the tongue of every investor in the nation, blockchain stands to make business and government operations more accurate, efficient, secure, and cheap with fewer middlemen. As we prepare to head into the third decade of blockchain, it's no longer a question of if legacy companies will catch on to the technology. It's a question of when. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast on blockchain.